There he is. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, you were supposed to, we, yesterday we made, you were like, oh, I'm going to come on yours. So I was on mine chatting. I'm like, Carson's drunk. He must have him doing his hair. But Wait, we am I supposed to, am I supposed to be on yours? No, it doesn't matter. Who can, it doesn't matter. I was just, we were just saying like where we were going to go. So it just, oh. I was on mine, you were on yours. and we're. I'm so to stupid. Go. No, you're not stupid. You're blonde. Um, I, it's really <laughs> it's a, worked out per perfectly. Hey, perfect. happy Good Friday. Happy Good Friday, Wait, yes. Look at, I'm wearing pastel too. Oh my gosh, we're always dressed like Easter eggs. Why is oh, that? Well, well it's, it's Good Friday and it's Easter on Sunday and it was just Passover. Yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so we were, um, interestingly, we were, um, we were just, I was talking to some of my friends who uh, celebrated Passover. Mm -hmm. and, you know, Passover, the story of Passover is not that dissimilar to kind of what's going on right now. Uh, yeah, there's like yeah. a, there's like a, there's yeah. like an epidemic or a, yeah. a tragedy or a scourge or something, yeah. right? So, and they said it was strange because of that. And then also everything was Zoomy and, you know, it's like and they were Zooming with their grandfather. So it was interesting. So right. I was just telling everyone it's Good Friday. I'm making... Fish is on the menu tonight. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, I figured, you know, we're looking for a theme night, so we figured Good Friday, why not? And, uh, and so we, oh, look at someone wants to come up and say hello. Oh my God, little Lago, hello. Baby Lago, what you doing? He actually looks really um, happy and relaxed. He is happy and relaxed, he loves it here. Oh my God, they're like, you know, it's just so easy for them to like, I open the door, they're running around. Right. Snow is it snowing there? Um, you know what? I saw um, weird stuff coming from the sky and I thought they were cherry blossoms in the wind, but they might have been snowflakes. Oh, yeah. No, they're, they're, it's, I, we had full snow. We had full snow. I'm going to put you no. in. You can lay um, um, no, it's, it's been like, you know, weird like weather, like super like tornado y windy. Oh, look at you and your hunting cup. I don't have mine, but I, I'm going to go fix, I'm going to get my medicine. And um, because that just, it's drink your juice, Shelby, drink your juice. It's Friday, so fuck yeah. it, I'm going to drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good Friday on top of it. So, um, so I'm doing, we're doing salmon on the grill tonight. And uh -huh. we, um, we are doing it with, um, we took cedar planks and we're marinating them in white wine. Where and did you get cedar planks during a pandemic? We ordered them. We ordered them from uh, the hardware store. What? How gay is your hardware store? Oh, wait. They have cedar planks for roofing. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're cedar roof planks. They're they're just natural, oh. untouched cedar with nothing on them. So yeah, they're they're just uh, you know just natural cedar. So we're I love it. Those, and then we're gonna grill them. We're gonna grill. We're doing a mustard rub on the uh, salmon, and then we're gonna grill it. Um, the Coleman's, you know, mustard powder and stuff. Uh huh. Grill it on the um, on the on the grill outside in the snow, like a couple of crazy people who are escaping a pandemic. Here comes <laughs> pandemic. Mama's medicine. Now, what's your flavor today? Mine's Sancerre again. Mine, mine's whatever. Uh, it's Sauvignon Blanc mm -hmm. and um, the Sancerre family. Yes, it is. It's a Sancerre relative, and I just buy yes. whatever um, is at the liquor store that has a nice label. So I thought this looked nice. Oh my God, yeah, that's pretty. I love it. Well, uh, I actually, it looks very suspiciously similar to my Sancerre label. It's Maison Nicholas, Ooh, which nice. I believe means Nick's nice. house in France. Now, I have a question for you. What do you have any special plans for the weekend? I mean, uh, are you like, are your mom and dad celebrating Easter? Like, how do you guys do this? Yes, yes, um, this is what I'm doing. Um, I'm sitting back down in my good lighting yeah. chair. No, um, very handsome. We, we nice. are, thank you, likewise. Um, so um, my uh, parents are the only people I've been seeing while I've been sequestered okay. at the farm and they're both um, 84 and 82. My mom just turned 82 yesterday. Right. So I what? made a really oh. nice um, birthday lunch and I had to get flowers at like Costco um, to make like a big arrangement for her because she loves fresh flowers. So I did that and I made lobster and big stuffed potatoes and it was epic. And I'm going to do the you same made thing. lobster mashed potatoes? I made lobster and then I made um, baked stuffed potatoes, which are the okay. most delicious food in the world. Right. Baked okay. stuffed I potatoes. Said, I thought you said I made lobster mashed potatoes which by the way which are also amazing 
By the way, I think that would that's like my favorite thing ever. Mashed potatoes and I yeah. have to prove it. And lobster. I mean, hello. I made lobster mac and cheese once and that was really good. And yeah, but that, uh, you feel, that you feel you know what I think would be great is to do a cauliflower mash with the lobster because then it's kind of like a lower guilt operation. Yes. I go to the lobster mac and cheese. As a gay man, you pretty much want to blow your brains out, kill yourself, throw yourself off of a bridge after you've eaten it. Wait. You're like, I will be single forever. <laughs> no, the real kicker is when you actually make it at home and you're reading the recipe and it says, start by melting two sticks of butter in a saucepan. I'm like, two sticks of butter? No, no, it should say, it should say, start by deleting all of the men's names that you know who are actually interested in dating you. Yeah. <laughs> and then end it all. Um, yeah, I'm trying to make a phone stand here. Yeah, it's um, it's really because I need my hand to drink. It's really super fattening, and I'm learning uh, by cooking at home, like how why certain things are naughty, like macaroni yeah. and cheese. This recipe had two sticks of butter, a cup of heavy cream, like <laughs> basically also all of Ina Garten's recipes you're like, like, start you're like, with like. Earth. First step is take all of your bathing suits and throw them in the garbage because you won't fit into them. Shred them. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, so you're. Will you be doing? You'll be doing stuff with your. Um, so I'm going to have my mom and dad over, yeah. and um, I'm going to make breakfast. I'm going to make uh, Easter lunch, and I got a little miniature ham. Nice. And uh, I'm going to make um, this yeah. thing called uh, Pennsylvania Dutch potato filling, which is a very local thing. Yeah. Yep. And a dandelion salad and um, probably a cheesecake. I make a very good cheesecake, which is oh. also super naughty. So we're doing we're doing on Sunday, we're going to do Sunday brunch. Uh, we're going to do just, you know, like champagne mimosas. And then... Um, and this is you and, and Ernie, your Ernie, quarantine yeah, mate. Who right, yeah, who I'm like quarantined with, one of my best friends. And he's here. And we're going to do uh, mimosas. And then we're going to do uh, poached eggs. Uh -huh. over, over ham with kind of like a um just like a little bit of a um uh just a little bit of like a lemon sauce so it's not so buttery hollandaise yeah it, it's like a hot, light hollandaise kind of operation with a little bit of butter and then um and then we are uh and that's kind of it i mean it's just going to be like how do you poach your eggs i poach them i'm a good egg poacher I are you, do you swirl eggs. the water and do you uh, yeah, put vinegar I, in it? Yeah, I put vinegar in it, a little bit of salt, and then, yeah, I poach the eggs. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty easy. So we'll do like a little brunch here, and then we're going to go for a hike. We're going to mm -hmm. do a hike, and we've, we're going to wear backpacks that are filled with books so that they're heavy, and then we're going to do this hike. Um, and My I'm, God, you're turning into G.I. Jane. I know. I mean, right? I mean, hello, hello, hello. But you know what? These shoes will keep me gay, so I'm not worried about it. Oh. Yeah, no. Aren't these needle... fun? I bought a... these in Aspen. I love them. A needlepoint and... slipper. Yeah, they're no, they're they're not needlepoint. They're made from. Are they kill 'em they're... rugs? Yeah, kill 'em rug. Yeah, they're yeah. Isn't it great? I love them. They're anyway, so cute. So those are fun. And um, so yeah, so this weekend, you know, it's like recognizing that it's a holy time, and I feel like there's no better time to say, hey, whether you believe in God or not, it's a great opportunity to just reach out and say, look. If you are there, could you help us out for the, you know, I mean, hello. For the love of your dad, can you help us out? For the love out? of your dad, could you help us out? <laughs> we are in a, real, we're in a real situation here. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so Carson, one of the things that I was thinking about um, today was that, do you remember when we were in London and we were with Queer Eye and we were living there? And, Vaguely. Okay, so we were in London and I don't know if I've ever told you this story. I may have. But so when we were staying in Dallas, remember we had to come up with the alias names? Our alias, like, so Yes, that, yes, yes. And you were Elle Woods and I was Shaliqua Defontaine of the Long Island Defontaines. Well, mm -hmm. I, again, had to go to London before everybody because of the, you know, I always had to go a little bit at, like a day early. Or yeah, to see the and, house and everything. And, yeah, to do all that. And so I got there and I got, I arrived at like, you know, five o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning at the airport, got to the hotel and um, I walked in and I said, hi, my name's Tom Felicia and I'm checking in for like three weeks. And they were like, sorry, we don't, you know, like we are not, 
I mean, whatever. Like, you know. Did they say, sorry, sorry, ma'am? Yeah, they were like, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. We don't have, we don't have your name. We don't have your name. And I said, well, you know, a lot of people spell Tom T-O-M, so it might be T-O-M. And Felicia you, you typically has an E in it for a girl's right. name. Not a girl, and it's all eyes. I file like you. Nope, still didn't have me. Then the guy kind of got like persnickety with me and was like, you know, you're gonna have to. Can we? We're gonna put your luggage outside because you know, like this is we have other people checking. Right, out. right. There's nobody here. It's real early in the morning. I think I vaguely remember this. Did you like? They, yeah, no, no. They would literally not. And I was like, I'm like walking outside with my luggage. The car's driven away. You had I'm to looking, call somebody. I'm looking. No, I'm looking at the doorman, and I'm thinking, I've got to start calling people. You know, and and see what I. But it's in L.A. It's like, what time is it in New York? Right. So and it was like, also it was also back when we didn't have like smartphones and like. No, there were no smartphones. I, I had a I had a trio. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, so I said all of a sudden I thought, wait a minute. So I go back in and I said. By any chance, do you have a suite for Shaliqua DeFontaine of the Long Island DeFontaines? And he said, yes, we do. Now, the he guy- said, yes, ma'am. Yeah, yes, ma'am. But the guy, I was like, the guy had to kind of know that five of us were coming. This was in the height of Queer Eye. Right. He had to know we were coming. So I was like, I think he was kind of fucking with me. So I decided after that, now remember I was still running my projects and I was working on interior. Right and I'm doing them all by FedEx. So my office every day would send me like three FedExes. I would open them up. After we were done shooting, I would sit with a drink and, and on my egg in my room and I would go through all this shit I had to go through and say, yes, yes. put post-its on everything, put it back in another FedEx packet and send it out. So anyways, so they were, um, they would call me and say, hi, um, Mr. Felicia, we have a FedEx package for you. And I'd be like, there's no one here by that name. Right. And I'm like, and I would send the FedEx package away. And then I would tell, I would call downstairs and it's like, um, there doesn't, there seems to be a problem there. So I tortured the guy at the front desk. No. They, they had to refer to me as Mr. Thank you very much. Mr. Shaliqua D. Fontaine. And I would look at him and then I would go, and, and he would go of the Long Island D. Fontaine's. I'd go, yeah. Oh my gosh, you're a terrible person. <laughs> I did it forever, the whole trip. It was hilarious. I can't believe you did that. I know, but he was so mean to me. I was like, girl, I will cut you. You. <laughs> do not get loud with me, sir. Do not get loud sir. with me. Do not get loud with me. Do you have any London stories that you want to share? That are um, no. Um, well, I have a couple of quick ones. So guys, if you're watching, we did, a, we did like three or four weeks of Queer Eye in London. Yeah. Um, and we had like shot like 25 episodes, like nonstop. And we were all like bedraggled and tired, but loving it. Yeah. And very grateful. Yeah. And they're like, now you're going to London. I was like, what? Um, and I went and we stayed at the Sanderson Hotel, which is gorgeous. And yeah, it was an yeah, Ian yeah. Schrager Hotel. Yeah. Very sexy. Yeah. Um, the elevator had like sparkling like um, stars in it. Yeah. There yeah, was always cool. like sexy music from like Ibiza yeah. Chill um, yeah, yeah. CDs playing. But when you're like getting up at 5 a.m. to go to work, you don't want to see fun people stumbling into the elevator and yeah, hearing sexy yeah. Ibiza chill music. You're like over it. And my room only had one chair and Tom alluded to it. It's and an the egg. chair was an egg. It was a, it was a fiberglass egg that you no, would no, sit no, on as a chair. A lightly upholstered kind of egg thing. Like an eggaman, like an ottoman, but an egg shape. It was a bizarre. Was I was, a I had to call down and be like, I'm going to be here for a month. Can I please get an actual chair? I don't want to sit on the egg. I sat on that damn egg the entire time. And, and, and not, I had to work on it. And, you know, we, had, we had those big windowsills that ran the whole length of the room. And Yes, uh, I remember that. And um, and I had all projects, like by client, like. Right. And I really was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I, I definitely, I'm, I do what I say I'm going to do. So, you know, I was, I was, I'd come back after we were shooting all day and, and I would put like two hours of like post-it notes everywhere. Egg, egg time. I also- you know, Do you remember in those rooms, every once in a while someone would be in the bathroom and I would just hit that button and all the curtains would open and they would be standing there using like the toilet and they would just, all of a sudden it would be like- Oh, and you could see outside. I think I had like an alley view or yeah, something. No, 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 no. The curtains were in the, in the, Maybe. Oh, in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, it was a glass bathroom. bathroom. You had total privacy, and then you hit the button, and then they're like standing there with the pants down in the middle of your room. 
No, it was a, um, it was a, it was not a very like work friendly hotel. Um, no, it was like staying in a nightclub. It was. Hi, Boston, Polly. Um, also, I have something I was thinking about this last night. Um, and I don't know if you're doing this and I don't know if any of our viewers are doing this, but, um, Wait a minute, wait a minute. Someone just said, you guys help the married straight guys keep their wives and the single ones get a girl. Well, can they Holla. have some mans up in here? <laughs> yes. Um, yes, we were very happy to do that. And we're happy it worked because, um, yeah, I mean, that was kind of like, it was it was kind of all about, you know, giving them sort of the, the sort of freedom to access the, sort of the basic tools that I think in those days people used to pick on you if you were a straight guy and you kind of thought about your hair and, and used you, product. You know what I mean? And you were just yes. Yeah, and that's when metrosexual kind of became a thing. And and I think also that's when like girls were like, yeah, I want my boyfriend to be a little bit more dialed together. And I think it's when guys were like, you know what? It's kind of fun to like to do this. And it's interesting. Yeah. Everybody's a little bit more design minded, food minded. All we of called it. We wanted to. We wanted to make their boyfriends and husbands just gay enough. Yeah, you oh, know. Do you remember? Do you remember when? Um, on was it the, uh, the um? Oh God, my, one of my favorite shows when we were the crab people. We came. Oh, to, um, uh, we South Park. South, we Park. South Park. I love South Park, and we were um, the queer eye came to town, and of course my character was kind of heavy set, which I was like, really. Really, I know. A I stay at home hand model does not need this kind of discouragement. I but know. Anyway, um, but they, uh, that we were the crab people. We we made all the guys gay, and then they found out that we were actually aliens from another planet, and that we yeah. Were at the end of the episode, our bodies and faces cracked off, and we had giant crab hands. Yeah. I was it's a genius kind of crab, if I remember correctly. Yeah, but you were the meaty crab. You were very desirable. I was the crab everyone wanted to eat. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I was doing, um, and since we're just chit-chatting for right now, catching up, I don't know if you're doing this, and I don't know if people who are watching have been doing this, but the first couple weeks of, like, shelter in place, I was like, this is fine. I'll clean my house. I'll organize oh, some closets. No, no, I, I've organized I, what I've organized. Oh my God, I'm so organized. Uh, now I'm just, I'm running out of things to do. And I find myself like up late at night, like it's a little later every night. Um, and like one o'clock is now turning into like 1.45. I'm like, I've got to go to bed, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I am starting to um, dive deep into the interwebs. No, 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 listen. And Googling okay. shit that like, I was like, oh. We're living parallel lives. Um, Oh, someone's coming to my house. Who's Wait, that? Listen, Carson, I woke up this morning. Listen, this, actually, uh -huh. this actually happened. Someone's here. Maybe it's one of your male suitors. Oh, you some somebody, is it a male, male, male order bride? <laughs> it's, it's somebody hot, actually. Really? They must be lost, you think? Um, I don't know, <laughs> but they're bringing a package and they're Ooh. setting it on my hot thing. Man, package, how you doing? <laughs> What is it? Don't touch it. Oh, that's right. Drop it far away. Um, it's food. Oh, but yeah. it came in a very... Um... Fresh. Oh, wow. Okay. That's good. Well, I would just leave it there for a little bit. So let the coronavirus die and then come get it later. Yeah, I'll get it in like 2021. <laughs> okay. So, so wait a minute. There was a hot so person. This morning, I swear to God, Carson, this is a true story. I woke up this morning and I thought to myself, there's a cabinet in my kitchen that when I close it, sometimes it opens itself. Mm -hmm. so I went down into the basement. I got a toolkit. I went back up into the kitchen with my cell phone, propped up inside the cabinet with a flashlight. And I then proceeded to take apart the mechanism that holds the cabinet closed. I screwed the little ball bearing that had screw on it to tighten it to make the ball bearing a little bit closer to hold the male and the female part that kind of go like this into the door. I, that's what I did this morning. And it worked. I actually fixed the kitchen cabinet. Oh my gosh. Cheers to you. Cheers. 
Cheers, queers. There's nothing we can't do. Um, I'm glad, everybody watching, I'm glad that was a much shorter story than I expected. I was getting ready to doze uh, off. Bro, uh, you know what? I mean, just, you got it, you know, like, this. it, are you in a rush? Where are no, you no, 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 no. Um, but I now I've done all this, like, internet deep diving, so, like, I'll get home from... Oh, yeah, but what you been deep diving in the internet? Well... Um, oh, you can go blind if you do that too much. <laughs> it's a it's a rabbit hole. And, oh, uh, your rabbit hole. Sorry, I hit a wrong hole. button. The rabbit hole made me oh, nervous. By the way, let me just tell you something. Wherever you are in the house right now, there's a you have a bad connection. It like kind of like there's like a little bit. Is this better? Is it an echo? Yeah, it's like an echoey moment. There you or go. Or is it blurry? Yes. No, you're better now. Hundred percent. I think it's when I have the phone sitting next to. Um, I have one of those big lamps that we bought one time for, at Lily in August. I'm gonna move it because yes. I think it echoes off where I'm putting the stand. How's that? Much better. Much better. Oh, you're great. You're good. You're good. So anyway, um, so yeah, like I'll, I'll like do my stuff, I'll have dinner, and then it's like, you have the endless night in front of you, and I'll watch a couple shows on on Netflix, yeah. but then I'll like, sometimes I'll talk to people online, and they'll be like, oh, I was at my lake house in the Poconos, and I'm like, where is it? And they're like, it's on Lake Winona, and I was like, I went to a theme park there when I was like nine years old. It was probably in the late 70s, early 80s. At Lake Winona? I, yeah, in Winona, and, um, and uh, I'm just Nobody like was owned by Winona Riding. No, no, Winona Ryder. No, she wasn't even a rich person yet. <laughs> um, but that type of conversation sparks me to start googling stuff. So I googled '70s theme park Poconos, Pennsylvania, and then it finally came up. And I'm like, it was called Magic Valley. And the person on the other conversation is like, I don't care. But now I've started. That sounds like the name of a porn. Doesn't it? Magic Valley. Magic. Yeah. <laughs> a, an all male porn. And, um, but then uh, that Google search led me to a thing called rcdb.com. I'm like, what is this? RCDB. What could that stand for? And I'm a naturally curious person. And I might have smoked Bro, a little bit of something. And, um, it said it was the roller coaster database. There is such a thing. A roller coaster database. Wow. Yeah, and it's a database of all of the roller coasters in the world. And it had the names of the two roller coasters that were at this old theme park, the Screamin' Demon and something else. Remember and when it, you said my story was lost? <laughs> I know, sorry. But um, I'm kidding. Go ahead. I love it. Was it. um, yeah, and it has all the information about like who made the roller coaster. It was made by Schwarzkopf Company in 1977. It only operated from 77 to 81. Like, and then I was like, I wonder who this Schwarzkopf Company is. And I did them because I thought, are they the same? What time were you up till? About two in the morning. You know, because there's just so much information out there to read and. Uh, be nostalgic about. So I did that. And then it said it was in Bushkill. And I was like, gosh, that's a terrible name. Oh my and God. By the way, that could be like, that could be like a Halloween porn. Bushkill. Bushkill. No, Bushkill to me is like when your bush is so big, it kills the vibe of the person that you're with. Like when. Or it could just be like, it could just be like, Oh, yeah. like a like a dangerous bush, like almost like yeah, like a like a bear trap, like, like the <laughs> like the saw, like the saw. <laughs> That's my own hand. Um, it could be like the saw, but where the bush is deadly. Anyway, my don't get me started on my bush because it's definitely. Oh my God, girl! I hope you got a, you got some go. You have like you have you have the accoutrement to deal with. I, the situation. I have horse clippers. I'll be fine. Oh, it's getting a little gray Wait, down there, so I I've got to get rid of it. From a viewer, questions: uh, How to make a space feel layered yet not cluttered? Oh, Jesus! Your secret. I'll tell you mine. Your secret may not be a good secret, by the way. 
No, my space is definitely. Yours doesn't feel cluttered. I don't think cluttered. No, I'm going to show you. Um, I think this You're is. You're a maximalist, girl. You're a maximalist. It's layered, but it's not cluttered. I do have no. my, bu my bunnies out for Easter. Oh, those are adorable. Aren't those love... cute? Yes. Okay, what's your secret? Well, I mean, I think, I mean, I think being layered is, and it's funny, I, you know, I had Jeffrey Bill Huber on um, uh, yesterday on um, house calls. And, right. And I used to work for him. I worked for him for like four years. It was really great. He was amazing. And uh, I love him. And we had so much fun. Carson, I'm telling you right now, we should plan a dinner or do something with him because you would, you two would literally. I like, love him. You guys would just, you guys would really, um, I think you guys would really click. He would enjoy you a lot. He, you guys have a very, he's got a great sense of humor. But anyways, so we were talking about, you know, sort of um, one of the things that Jeffrey does so well and one of the things that I love to do, and I think it's one of the reasons I, it worked out for me in television, is about really tapping into the individual and telling their story and creating right. a narrative. And I think when you're looking around your home and you're looking at your accessories and your books in your bookcase and your picture frames and your horse awards and all of those things and your pillows, you have to look at it as like, it's a narrative and it's telling a story. Mm -hmm. And you know when someone says it's a run on sentence, like I talk in all the time? Yes. I got it. And, and so, but the idea is that I think if you look at it in that sort of framework, um, sometimes you look at a table and you think there's just too much information. There's right, too many, okay. There's too many ideas. So you have to think of it like sometimes it's easier to take it out of the context of decorating and design and looking at it as just like, what am I getting from this? Is it too much? Is it too chaotic? Is it too much information? Mm -hmm. And I think it's really about telling a story. And so when you go into your space, if you imagine yourself as a person who doesn't know who you are or doesn't know who your client is or doesn't know who the person that lives there is or the people that are there, you want to look around and you want to be able to walk out of that space with a clear, thoughtful, and like accurate assessment as to who they are where they've been, where they are, and where they're going. Right. And, and, and there doesn't need to be, you know, like when people say it's just like too many words or not enough words, or that's just too short, it feels curt, it feels, it doesn't feel warm and inviting. And then sometimes it's too flowery, like what I'm doing right now. Right, exactly. Um, <laughs> I think it's great. Um, I think you always talk about editing and it's really, think of it like you're editing like actual words, like a manuscript. Yeah, right. And if there is too much to the story and it makes the story convoluted, um, yeah. here's all of my like crap. Yeah. Um, and that needs to be edited and I'm going to, I promise. You um, know so what, but I actually, I mean, I think it looks great. And also you have to keep in mind, like part of your sensibility is that is like, it, it, there's a, there's a, a, a more, a, you know, like a, a more is more kind of, point of view but that doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's bad i just think that there's there's that there's the more is more and then there's just there then there's too much but i don't think you go right. there you're like you're very aware of like you're very self-aware as a human so you're very aware which i think is yeah i'm very self-aware to the you know i think gays are very self-aware like you know because gays will be like do you think see this thing right here does it i can't go out i'm like does what? this make me look old yeah <laughs> I'm like, yeah. what makes you look old is that you're old, girl. You old. You're old. That old carcass you've been dragging. You know around. what makes you look old is your old face. <laughs> Thank you. This old yeah. thing. Mm. Mm. We didn't have a we didn't have a drinking word for today's episode. Oh, today's drinking word is um, botanicals. Botanicals. Okay. <laughs> I really I'm have to botanical. water some That's of these botanical. botanical. I, hmm? I have a painting of a botanical. Well, I have an actual real life botanical right here. I think we said botanical two times. So and I have a botanical over up and up in here. Where where is it? Uh oh. Ooh. There we go. Sorry. Mm. Botanical. How you doing? Oh hey girl. I always say I always say that Carson puts the hoe in. Botanical. Yes, I, I do. I, I just a good way for me to say ho. Doesn't really make sense, but you know what I'm saying. But, but
But you also said botanical. How you do it? <laughs> mm. Everybody, okay. don't forget to watch. Don't forget to watch RuPaul's Drag Race tonight at eight o'clock oh, on VH1. Right. That's right. That's right. Oh my God. What was the one name of the one I watched last week? What was it called? Um, the game show. The game show. Yeah, they had a game show called Snatch. Oh, uh, the Snatch Game. Yeah, the Snatch Game. That was hilarious. <laughs> this week is really, really good because uh, Dying. You you know I'm like I am literally like I might as well be three hundred thousand years old. I mean I literally don't watch television. I mean I you know I've never watched one episode of Get a Room. I never you, really watched. You them. haven't. I have to watch them. I mean I watch little pieces. It's like, so like, good. I was just thinking about it the other night. Somebody sent a message saying, like, I love Get a Room because of the way you would work with difficult clients. And I was like, I just remember, like, Kenyatta, who was a very difficult yeah. client, said to me, how involved can I be in this process? And I just blankly looked at her and said, it all depends on how annoying you are. <laughs> and I was like, I actually said that to, like, a, a client, like someone that was paid. No, like, by the way, let me just tell you right now. When someone says annoying client, I'm like, you can just say client. <laughs> I've learned. And I have so many people now that um, are just like. By the way, you can say annoying designer. And you could also just say designer. Designer. Yeah. No, it's a two-way street for sure. But um, people, um, you know, uh, people in the. Yourself, if you want to pick on other people, my philosophy is if you want to pick on other people, you better pick on your own self, girl. Girl, because if you can't oh. pick on yourself, then how the hell are you going to pick on somebody else? And by the way, how are you going to get good at picking on other people if you don't practice on yourself? That's Thank you. I'm right. the same with kissing. Um, <laughs> you know, I, that's how, yeah, I beat the shit out of myself. I was like, that's how I got good at gay bashing. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. That's a little too private. Um, just kidding. Uh, just kidding. So question we have a question we have to answer what is it what is it um someone just sent in and it just says bush i don't know why they said that but it must be in reference to what we were talking about earlier so oh um, yes um how um how are you guys um organizing your pantry and by pantry i think she means the place where we keep our food um have you done any pantry organization i have yes i um, have too. My kitchen here, I never really organized or had a plan. Yeah. I just started throwing crap into yeah. it and I would have people over and it was panic yeah. and there's yeah. pasta over here and pasta down there yeah. and pans everywhere. So yeah. I organized the kitchen into sectors of like, this is where all the pots go. This is where all the baking stuff goes. Yeah. And then my pantry I did, I have to do mine um, by the size of the jar because the shelves are not movable and like, Whatever medium jars go on the medium shelf and the tall right. things like vinegars and whatever right. go on the tall shelf. So I did organize all of it. And I have um, I have like a basement pantry as well with those rolling metal racks where I have yes. like bulk pasta <laughs> and like big serving trays. Yes. Um, so it's pretty organized. Well, so what I did was, and I, you know, my kitchen, I, so I've been cooking and I actually enjoy cooking. I enjoy cooking when I'm not in a rush and right. I'm not in a rush right now. So I'm enjoying cooking. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and my house, my friend, my housemate is a, he's a, it's been fun to do. It's kind of an activity that is he a good cook as well. You know, he's very healthy. He's a good cook. He's, I don't, I don't think either of us have considered ourselves people that are good at cooking or like mm -hmm. proficient at cooking, but I've actually realized that I'm, I'm actually pretty intuitive with it. And right. I think I had a mom that was a great cook and loved to cook. And so I was around that. Um, and then I also was in a relationship for 13 years with um, my ex-boyfriend, Greg, who was one of the greatest cooks. I really? Ever. Oh my God. He's amazing. I didn't know that. Oh my God, he's unbelievable. He's like literally one of the best cooks ever. And he could cook for 40 people as easily as he could for two people. So it was like, so he was really great. And he had the kitchen organized in kind of a way that, you know, evolved over time and with, because, you know, just whatever. And I went through everything this in, in the pantry and I started saying, okay, what do I use? Like he used a variety of spices because he's very like, he had a, his head was like, you know. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know. I don't know how. To There's some things I'm not even sure what they are. It's for it's a fish spice. I'm like, I ain't. So I'm like, I don't know if that's gonna happen very often. So what I did, right. 
I did things by what do I use the most and what do I like the most? And then what are things that I use secondary? And then are, what are things that I'm interested in using that I haven't used yet? And so I kind of zoned them by like close to the stove, in the cabinet next to the stove, in the drawer next to the stove, are all the things that I use and that I'm excited about using that I need to use every day. Um, and then all of the things that um, I use a little bit are you know, in the actual pantry pantry. And then the things that I haven't used yet and I'm not kind of sure what they are yet um, are on the higher shelves in the pantry where I actually have to like get a step stool to get to them. Yeah, so, so that's storage. Yeah, so I kind of, I zoned it by sort of what I felt was most usable and most practical. And I brought the things that I used the most closest to me. And then I took that same philosophy with both of the refrigerators in my house and the freezers in my house. And I just kind of like, I said to myself, you know, rather than doing it by, I said, do it by what makes sense for my lifestyle and the way I'm living and what is actually um, makes it a little bit efficient for me to do what right. I need to do. And, um, and, then the, and then I broke it down into those three groups. And that was very helpful for me. Okay. You know, it really has been. Someone has a question about, they have a fireplace right. like yours, like a big stone, like lodge yeah. kind of look. Yeah. Uh, but they want to update it and make it modern. So um, well, what should they do? Well, I mean, first of all, I would say the first thing I would say is you have to think about the context of its surroundings. So like my house, this is my weekend home. Um, I'm, it's when I leave the city. My apartment in New York City is... Um, uh, it's clean, it's modern, it's in a modern building. Contemporary. Build. Yeah, contemporary. Floor to ceiling glass windows. It's actually in El Decor this month. Um, but it, it, that's what that experience is. It feels very urban in New York to me. When mm -hmm. I come here, I want it to feel like this feels like what I want it to feel like. Um, but if you wanted to modernize it, I think you have to make sure that the context, the house, the location, the lifestyle all sort of makes sense with that. Right. And I think that, um, one of the things that you could do to make it really clean and simple, I mean, I think just painting it white could be kind of fabulous. Um, I think that's a really easy, simple, fresh way to, you know, it could just sort of tonality just go right into the walls. But I mean, we did on our show on Get a Room, we took a fireplace that was like a dated um, yeah. 70s kind of stone that was not real pretty. Mm -hmm. It was like a classic you know, man, uh, fireplace mantle like this. It was something that was very dated and kind of not great. And then what we did was we kind of, we boxed it out and we did that really great slate kind of like real slate, but slate wall covering. This wall covering. And it looked amazing. So, I mean, I think doing something simple like that um, could be great. And, you know, it depends on your budget and what you really want to do. And also what the context of the environment is. Because, you know, if like, if it's a house, if it's like an old like cottage that looks like it should have a stone fireplace, and then all of a sudden you have like Carrera polished marble, it might look weird. Yeah, yeah, I think that's such a good point that like, if you want modern, but your house is like a Victorian or like yeah. a lodge or something, yeah, it's to never gonna really look right in there. So you need to make yeah. sure that um, it works with the rest of your house. Like. When you yeah. live in like Connecticut and you have like a Tuscan kitchen and your house is colonial, that always feels wrong to me. So yeah. make sure like your whole house tells the same story. Yeah, it's got to have that narrative that kind of ties it all together. And I think that so many of the materials that you need to look at are kind of a part of the context of what you're dealing with. You know, so like you could do something really great, like in bedrooms, sometimes we've boxed out fireplaces and done very simple mantles uh, or sort of a surround um, and then really just did a piece of art above the fireplace and um, and then just kind of negated having it to be too heavy. We wanted it to feel a little bit more a part of the room and to be a little bit lighter and then allowing the, the, the fireplace in the living room to really be that- Be the star. That's um, not and do think you... about what we did, what we did. We did that on Get A Room. Remember the fireplace in the corner in um, the Italian couple in New Jersey? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. We, remember I did the mantle around the, the fireplace? That looked like a microwave. Basically, they had like yeah. a, an yeah. electric-ish looking fireplace that was built in a wall in a bedroom, and it just looked like it was an espresso machine. Yeah. Um, so 
uh, we created like a mantle moment and like a, uh, like a hearth too. Did we make like yeah. a bump out hearth, like a sitting area? Yeah, yeah we did. And we kind of defined it, but we kept it very simple, brought the wallpaper right up to it. And then in the living room, we created that really great collection molding. Yes. And it was like, it just kind of made that into the star. So you kind of let the living room be, and you have to think about it as the formality of the rooms. You know, your living room fireplace should be kind of like, knock it out of the park. And then as you go to these smaller spaces or these kind of uh, more intimate spaces, it can start to become a little bit more, uh, a little bit quieter and mm -hmm. a little bit more subtle and a little bit less sort of, you know, formal. So think of it as clothing, you know, you have your, you're wearing black tie in the living room mm -hmm. and then in the bedroom, you're just wearing- You're nude. <laughs> um, this, is a good, you... this is a good question. And I think a lot yeah. of people have this. Okay. Um, Jenny has a house that's from like 2003 and I think it was a colonial and all the rooms are very like traditional, but like 2000. So like a blood red dining room and a gold, gold yellow living yeah. room. And the woodwork is all creamy white. Um, the way to update that, what colors? So are you thinking like neutrals or maybe adding a textured wall covering? Well, so start with this. You were saying it's kind of like a 70s style house. Is that what you said? Uh, 2003, but done oh. in very like, you know, like the late 90s, everyone had like a, a red dining room and yeah, like a right. old living room and like a green bedroom. Well, I think, I think the first thing is you want to look at it as um, what a great opportunity to unify the spaces at some level and not have that, you know, that's a very outdated sort of like, it's like the White House is like the green room and the yellow bedroom. And right. Like, you know, it's like, it feels very, um, you know, it feels very- Segmented. Uh, it, yeah, it, it's also a different time. You know, like today we want our spaces to kind of flow and we use our, our kitchens and our dining rooms and our, they, they start to become part of the same story. Right. So, I think what's really great is looking at public space and private space and uh, transition space as an opportunity. Like when you walk into a house and if you choose an entrance hall pink color, let's say it's, uh, you know, like a light, you know, silvery gray and that silvery gray goes up the staircase and through all the bedroom halls, that's public space. Then you go into your living room and let's say you want to do this kind of like really soft, 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 mossy, like kind of whitish green. Mm -hmm. That can go through the living room, the dining room, and even the sunroom or the family room and kind of connect those spaces. And then, you know, or like, or the public, you know, the kind of the private, uh, I'm sorry, the public spaces. Then you go to the kitchen and maybe the kitchen then gets a wall covering, like a great right. texture that then goes right into the family room, down the back hall to the mudroom, and then out, you know, by the garage. And then you do something really fun in the powder room. So I feel like you start to connect groups of like, when you're in the living room and in the dining room and in the sunroom, you have those spaces sort of talk one language. Then you have the entrance hall kind of bleed into like the hallway upstairs, the hallway downstairs, and it kind of connects those stories. And then the kitchen and the family room start to sort of talk to each other mm -hmm. and become a part of that back at hall that goes to the mudroom. And then just have like the powder room to me is always a place to like let go loose, crazy, go crazy, like big impact, small space. Exactly. Right. Um, I agree. And I think just taking like a 2000s house and doing some beautiful more neutrals and not those real saturated like Home Depot colors from 2003 yeah. Yeah. is yeah. a great way to update. Um, and, and like you said, keep it kind of all in the same yeah, kind family. Of together and also then. I think you can look at color as being a little bit more subtle and and almost looking at them as like, if you were to wear them as like, like this color blue looks great with this pink, but if you washed it out, they would even be a little bit more, sort uh -huh. of, it could work even a little bit better. And then if you brought in like sort of a, a whitish gray as sort of like a neutral that would then, think of like the hallway areas as a really good opportunity to create what I would call a, um, like a cleansing area. Yeah, so, it's a visual sorbet. Yes, so that you go from like a room that has texture or color, then you go through something that's kind of connects all the dots, but is like a neutral area 
uh, or as like Carson just said, the visual sorbet. I think that's really, I think that's a great way to look at it because it doesn't become like, but you're not being hit like that like, all the time. Oh my God, what's happening? It's like all this different stuff. And, yes. I, and that feels a little bit, that feels definitely more timely than, uh, than, you know, sort of having all those different colors. Um, so Carson, I have a question for you. Okay. You have been uh, guilty of making a lot of sort of pies mm. and pastries. I have. Where the hell are all these things going? Where are they going? Um, I give most of them away, like, um, to whom? <laughs> uh, I will sometimes, um, send some to my family. My sister lives next door, so I'll drop some off, like, in her oh, mailbox, okay. and, oh, um. Oh, your sister, I say hello. I love I her. will. And the people okay. that take care of the horses, I give yeah. them, um, uh, like, the trainers. I'm making a rhubarb cake today with fresh rhubarb that I picked from my garden. I'm is my color weird? I can't figure yeah, out. Yeah, you're the blown. Thing. You're a little blown out. Like you have a lot there, of light on. There your we face. go. Okay. Is that better? I don't know. Um, I no, it's not. A lot of light. I think maybe the sun came out or something, or maybe there's. I think it's just like the 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 light reflects off the lake like crazy town, and there's like this white haze. I don't know. You know what? Can't keep up with it. I know. Are three okay. candles on Least one? These are my problems. <laughs> I mean, get over it. Get over uh, it. So you're giving all your pastries away, your pasties, your pastries. I'm giving my pastries away to neighbors and uh, coworkers that are doing things on the farm, et cetera. And I'm making a rhubarb uh, cake today. It's a recipe I found from Australia. I just find these recipes on the internet and then I just make them. And um, are you eating a lot of them? Not really. I will eat them. Not really. I have. I had you on a keto plan. I know it was so good, and I got so a meat bucket or whatever. So skinny when we were doing that, and now I'm just occasionally I have to have some carbs. For everyone who's watching, I had Carson. I roped him into my unhealthy, um, whatever. What was that thing? Our meat locker. <laughs> it was a keto diet, and we only during the entire filming of Get a Room, which was like four or five months in the summer two years ago. We only lived on meat and cheese and guacamole. Oh, no cheese, no cheese, no cheese. There was no cheese. Oh, just meat and guacamole. It was meat, cheese, guacamole. And I was really skinny and it really worked. And something else. It was meat, cheese. No, meat, guacamole, and... And else? mayonnaise. Oh, a lot of mayonnaise. There was a lot of we mayonnaise. had mayonnaise was allowed. <laughs> and we had a cooler that looked like we were carrying like a new liver around. The little playmate. And um, that's what okay. we lived on. Carson, I have, okay, so I want to do, I'm going to play, uh, remember how we, we talked about doing word association? Oh, yes. So I thought it'd be fun to just like, okay, I want to do an Easter version. We only have a few more minutes, but I wanted to do um, word association for Easter, okay? Okay. Um, and, um, and wait, it says touch your screen so we can refocus. Oh, yeah, just put your finger on your face. That's it, people. I'm telling you, that's it. Oh, I yeah. don't mind it. It's very, um, you look like that movie Powder. Um, Wooten Tog. Okay, so um, word association. And by the way, it is the, it, it's Good Friday. Easter, Easter Bunny's on his way. So, mm -hmm. pastel. Pastel, uh, cashmere. Sisal. Rug. Americana. Uh, uh, red, white, and blue. Brunch. Gaze. <laughs> Basket. Uh, uh, oh, God, I went to a dark place. I, did. I knew you did. <laughs> okay, hunt. Uh, what did you call me? Nothing uh, but a stupid old hunt. <laughs> uh, hunt, like Easter egg hunt. hunt. Egg, yeah, egg hunt, yes. Okay. Bunny. Bunny, uh, rabbit. Okay, but yours are so, okay, so now you have to ask me some. Do you have any? <laughs> uh, okay, um, resurrection. Um, hook up. Jesus. <laughs> hook up. <laughs> um, I'm, uh, kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Jesus, um, uh, storytelling. Mm, okay, um, ham. 
Um, the love of my life. Chocolate. <laughs> Um, the other love of my life. Chinoiserie. Um, homosexuals. <laughs> there you go. Ding, 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 ding. You win. You should be on, we should be on $25,000 pyramid together. I think it's a hundred now for inflation, but. Oh my God. That is so funny. Wait, let's see if there's any questions. Touch your screen. Your question. Who are some of your favorite designers? Okay. Do you know who I never talk about and I love? Who? Billy Baldwin. Oh, uh, yeah, like I, old school. Like he was from well, like the 1930s, right? Uh, yeah, but you know, he was, well, I mean, first of all, I love, I always loved what he did. It was very kind of like pared down classical, but, um, and, or traditional, but he, um, he was the first. Design, male designer to really break into the field because prior to him, it was really all socialites. You yeah, know, like, like Dorothy Draper, Siri yeah. Mom. Yeah, they were all very sort of, sort of uh, well-heeled gals who- um, Ladies were, who lunched who would do their friends' houses. They'd yeah. be like, oh, Celeste, could you come over and show me some of those silks that you saw in Paris last week? Oh, I'd oh, love to. Oh, that would be divine, that would be divine. I would love to. Let me talk to Thomas. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you get, hey, girl, I'm coming over to show you some new things. <laughs> girl, wait till you see these scalamandre fabrics I found on my trip to New York. Ooh, honey. Um, yeah, praise the Lord. Let's see if we have any others. Uh, la, 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 la. Um, do you, wait, on, in that same vein, I was reading this book. Do you know who Nancy Lancaster is? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. They have Lancy. They have her. Uh, her textiles are still very popular. Yeah, and she was like basically a socialite yeah. American from Virginia who became like an amateur decorator and lived yeah. like. She's basically me, and um, but she had a garden designer, and I think this is the greatest name well, ever. It's one twenty nine. Go. We have one Capa minute. Capability Brown. Capability Brown. That was her garden designer, and he was a famous garden designer in London. That's isn't that my the drag group? name? That's isn't my that drag name. Group? I don't think you want Brown in your drag name, girl. <laughs> hey, you don't, you don't, you're not the boss of me. Okay. <laughs> okay, listen, I love you. We're I love you more. Second, this is always, as always, Carson, so much fun. So and easy breezy. I can't believe it was like, we're, it's like, what happened? We're like gonna get shut off. Anyway, I know. I love you and I miss you. Stay healthy. Tell your mom and dad happy Easter and your sister. I will. Send love to everybody, okay? And I will. And enjoy that cedar plank salmon and give my best to Ernie. I will. Okay, big kiss. Okay, bye. And bye, bye everybody. Bye. bye, everyone. Thanks for joining.